soft and high cushion. It's not even a contest. The Rebel Vite. Oh, it's <laughs> it's melting butter. Let's go. Let's go, everybody. How you doing out there? Welcome to the channel. If you're new, if you're finding the channel for the first time because you're interested in learning about running shoes, you're in the right spot. Welcome to the studio, okay? I want to mention, though, at the beginning, this is the neutral road running shoe matrix for early 2021. So the first six months of 2021. Want to mention that at the beginning. So I'm not going to talk about stability shoes, not going to talk about trail running shoes. And as many of you know, I'm in the process of moving. Therefore, some of the shoes I'm going to talk about are not here. They're packed away already. All right. So just want to mention that as well. But I will get you some good uh, solid B-roll throughout the next 10 to 15 minutes. If you are new to the channel, thanks for being here. We talk about running shoes. We talk about training. We talk about mountain running. We talk about life. Okay. So hit that subscribe button. I don't think you're going to be disappointed. And just in case you missed some of the first impression vlogs or 50 mile full reviews of the shoes I'm going to mention, I'm going to list as many as possible down below in the description, but also they're listed over on Demore Global Running com which is also listed down below if you want to go more in depth because we're just going to mention these shoes as we go through the matrix and on that note here we go comment of the day we're doing it at the beginning because it helps explain the matrix this is from albert from six months ago on the last matrix i did upper right hand corner from late 2020 albert tass he says uh how to decide so he says how to decide what type uh, we are for with respect to the type of shoe you want to buy so he says soft firm ground contact responsive energy return is it all personal preference or is there a special uh, way to approach choosing a running shoe and i will say albert just to answer the question right now like it is personal preference meaning okay this the rebel v2 is not responsive this is a soft very soft, buttery soft. That's right, butter. This is a buttery soft type of shoe. Whereas, here we go, the Asics Metaspeed Sky, which is going to show up in the Matrix in a minute, very responsive. Meaning, I mean, it's just, it's, uh, it snaps. That's the best word. It snaps back into place faster than, frankly, any other shoe I've tested thus far in 2021. Okay, so there you go, Albert. It is personal preference. And now those are the categories that we're going to jump into right now that I break down the matrix. So here we go. We've got soft or high cushion, firm landing, ground contact, responsive, and energy return, meaning the bounce of the shoe. Does the, does the shoe, specifically the midsole, but it's also impacted by the outsole, the rubber on the outsole, does the shoe give you a good solid bounce back through your foot strike. So that's how I break down the matrix. And then, uh, so that's the Y axis. The X axis is easy days, daily trainers, tempo days, threshold days, AKA close to race days, not exactly, but close. And then last but not least, middle distance or long run shoes. Okay, so that's the Y axis. So this is how we break it down. And I'm going to give you, and by the way, I've tested every single shoe that's about to appear in the matrix that I already mentioned that. Just want to put that out there at the beginning. We're going to run through it. I'm going to talk a little bit about drop and price point. But at the end of the day, again, demoreglobalrunning.com if you want to take a much deeper dive. Last but not least, veteran DGR members out there, if you could, all I ask, share the vlog with a friend, with a running buddy, with a running group that you're a part of. If you could share this vlog out, that, I would appreciate that uh, because I can't even begin to calculate the amount of hours and research and testing that goes into creating this matrix. It's, it's six months of work to this point right here, which is exciting because, you know, this idea of a matrix really came about 12 months ago. And the response to the matrix matrices matrices is that how you say it has been incredible so thanks for sharing this vlog i really would appreciate it here we go easy day category first uh so we're going easy to hard okay so easy day uh running shoe first here we go at the top soft and high cushion which is the frankly most important um criteria that i use for deciding whether or not I'm gonna use a shoe for an easy day, okay? So at the top, here we go, the New Balance 
Fresh Foam More V3 with a four millimeter drop, 10.8 ounces in, and I have to, for the sake of time, I just have to put men's size nine. I wish I could talk about my size with respect to weight or even women's size eight, but for the sake of time, here we go, 10.8 ounces in men's size nine, coming in at $165. And on that note as well, if you want to support the channel, buy the shoes through Running Warehouse. I've got links down below. Uh, that It does help. I do get a, a little kickback from Running Warehouse when you buy the shoes using the links down below. Okay, firm landing. This is a little bit of a curveball, everyone, and I don't even know if it's out here. It's the Hoka Clifton 8. That EVA, and I know it's crazy, but compared to the Fresh Foam More V3, I think Hoka is going to have to innovate a little bit with respect to their durometer in the Clifton lineup. It's got cushion, no doubt, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a soft cushion, okay? It's a very fine line there, and right now the Clifton 8 is definitely coming in not as soft as the Fresh Foam More V3. For ground contact, it's now, for I got to mention, for easy days, the ground contact is not what I'm looking for. For easy days i want cushion i want soft i want buttery soft i want to bop along but some people do prefer ground contact feel all the time including for easy days so i'm going to put an asterisk next to the Convara 12. okay there you go Convara 12 there's some stats on your screen responsive whoo this is a this was a curveball didn't expect this in 2021 the a6 noosa tri 13 100% responsive, bounce, you know, flexing back into its position very quickly, the A6 trot, but it could almost be approaching firm, just so you know, but we're going to put it in the responsive category for, again, but I'm not necessarily looking for a ton of response in an easy day shoot. Just want to make that clear. And energy return. Oh, man, this was, oh, man, it broke my heart when I could no longer run in this shoe after 50 miles, you know what it is. It's the Nike Zoom X Invincible Run Fly Knit coming in at a whopping $180. Other than the price point, it's a pretty ridiculous shoe. Zoom X midsole foam throughout. <laughs> it's, it almost feels like cheating when you run in the shoe, okay? But, <clears throat> excuse me, with respect to responsive, or sorry, with respect to bounce and energy return for an easy day, Butter, butter, butter. There you go. Nike Zoom X Invincible Run Fly Knit. Moving on to, oh yeah. And if I could only buy one easy day shoe in 2021 thus far, New Balance Fresh Foam More V3 has been my favorite easy day shoe. There you go. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Moving on to the daily trainer category. Okay. Soft and high cushion. All right. So this is a, a category where I'm looking to pick up the pace from easy day. What I like to call my steezy days. All right. So steady plus easy split down the middle. Steezy. All right. We need some steezy merch at some point. Everybody Brooks glycerin 19 with a 10 millimeter drop $149 Brooks glycerin 19 for a nice soft high cushion ride, but you can pick up the pace a little bit compared to, let's say, the Fresh Foam More V3. Firm landing, SL 20.2, you better believe it. Little firmer landing through that durometer score, 100%. Love this shoe. I love the SL 20 lineup. So for a daily trainer, firmer landing, there it is on your screen, Adidas SL 20.2. All right, moving on to ground contact. Oh my goodness. Pause, pause. I just, hold on. I literally just took the Under Armour Velocity, uh, no, what is it? The Under Armour, yeah, the Under Armour Velocity, uh, Flo <laughs> the Under Armour Flow Velocity Wind. There we go. All these names, these crazy names, Under Armour Flow Velocity Wind. Uh, this is coming in for the ground contact feel for Daily Trainer. I took this to 50 miles. I'm kind of shocked that I did. Under Armour, I think, is moving in the right direction, but it definitely has a lot of ground contact feel. There is the stack heights for you, but $160, okay? So uh, just literally, so I haven't actually published the 50-mile full review yet for this guy. Stay tuned. Pretty excited about it. I'm pretty excited about it, everybody. Just need to get that 50-mile full review out there sooner rather than later. Tweener alert, tweener alert. Going back to the Asics Tri Noosa 13 for responsive, for daily training. 
responsive to, so that's in the, that's interesting all right the first tweener alert here in the studio for the matrix early 2021 and then last but not least energy return and bounce you know what it is come on raise the roof for the a6 nova blast 2 come on now Oh, is it my favorite shoe thus far in 2021? We will see. Uh, A6 Nova Blast 2 Daily Trainer Bounce. And if I could only buy one Daily Trainer thus far in 2021, winner, winner, chicken dinner, going, of course, to the Nova Blast 2. I love the shoe. I love the bounce. I love the decoupled groove on the outsole. And I love the geometry of the outsole. I don't know. They're, they're blowing my mind. Actually, I'm... I'm probably most excited about the Nova Blast 3 in 2022, just to see if they can make it even better. Moving on to that tempo category, soft and high cushion. It's not even a contest. The Rebel Beat. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's melting butter, melting onto your lap butter. It's just, it's just ridiculous. Rebel V2, there you go for some stats. A6 magic speed for a firmer land. Not crazy firm. Is it out here? It is out here, but it, oh, I may have, that's one of the shoes I think I packed up. I'm sorry. The A6 magic speed, slightly firmer. Um, this one was a little hard to actually find a firmer shoe for the tempo category, but we're going with A6 magic speed coming in at $149. Ground contact, oh my my. You got to have very strong feet and strong ankles for the Skechers Horizon Vanish 2. Skechers Horizon Vanish 2, okay, but it's coming in at five points. It's, it, it's like when I say that it's, it feels like a slipper, it means like there's, there's no support in the shoe, but it's coming in at 5.6 ounces. So if you have very strong feet, very strong ankles, and you want to get up on your toes for a tempo to just like really get it going, I mean, you consider it. Skechers Horizon Vanish 2. Moving on to the Hoka Mach 4. I know it's out here. Where'd you go? There it is over there. Hoka Mach 4. Oh, man. Coming in for the responsive snappy. Oh, yeah. Responsive snappy category for the Tempo Days. There it is. Here's the deal. This, this is a tweener as well. I mean, this could be a daily trainer, uh, Tempo, I mean, frankly, even a long run shoe. Okay, Hoka Mach 4, you all know how much I love that shoe. Moving on to the Saucony Endorphin Speed 2 for energy return. Hard to deny it after what it accomplished in 2020 with the original Endorphin Speed. So yes, it rains again for the uh, tempo category, Saucony Endorphin Speed 2, but it is coming in at the most expensive in the tempo category. With $159, it does have a nylon plate inside the midsole, okay? And if I could only buy one, this was hard. <laughs> this was very, very hard. I went Rebel V2. It was so fun to run in. I Okay, I'm not afraid to say it. Rebel V2, Endorphin Speed 2, Mach 4. Ooh, for tempo, for tempo. For daily or for any, you know, it would change a little bit. But Rebel V2, I, I went there. I went there. Here we go. Threshold day. So threshold days, for those that don't know, you're approaching your anaerobic threshold in training, but you're not pushing through, okay? You're not going completely anaerobic, but you're getting close, which means it's the fastest uh, long, it's the fastest run you will do in your training without doing intervals on the track or mile repeats on, at your cross country course, okay? So this category could also translate the closest to race day. Specifically, I'm talking about road racing, all right? So that's, you know, keep that in the back of your mind. But I will do a marathon and half marathon road racing shoe matrix probably in September, all right? We need a couple more shoes to come out onto the marketplace. Before we do that, here we go. Soft and high cushion. I can't believe it. Actually, I can believe it. Here it is. The R's. I thought I forgot it. It's of course the, it's like New Balance is going for soft. They are, they're just on it. The RC Elite, between the Rebel and the RC Elite, they win again for soft and high cushion for threshold or race days on the roads. If you want a soft landing for your road marathon in 2021, Boom, this is the winner for you. RC Elite 2, there's the stats on your screen. Moving on to the Skechers Razor XS, okay? For that firmer landing, Skechers Razor XS, all right? And for ground contact, crazy. 
I mean, I kind of forgot about this shoe until I was researching over the past couple days for this vlog. It is the Reebok Float Ride Run Fast 3.0, all right? And only $140, all right? So don't forget, Reebok is coming on in 2021. The Reebok Float Ride Run Fast 3.0 and $140. All right, moving on to the responsive category. It's the A6 Meta Speed Sky. A6 Meta Speed Sky, come on now. Oh, it's ridiculous. I mean, that plate, it's responsive and it's light. The shoe overall is light. There it is again, men's size nine on your screen. Beats out the next one by I think 0.2 or 0.3 ounces. Uh, it is the Nike Next Percent 2 for the best energy return thus far that I have tested out of all the shoes for the threshold and race day category in 2021. The Nike Next Percent 2, okay, is winning the end now. I had to go tie. I'm going tie. I hate, I don't like giving out ties. Oh, it's so hard. I'm going tie, tie, tie. Meta Speed Sky, Next Percent 2. It's so, it was, oh my goodness. It was hard. It was very, so, if you want a little more response, or yeah, a little more snappy underfoot, boom. If you want a li little more bounce, Zoom X midsole, boom. There you go. All right, moving on to middle distance and long run. So for me, I do long runs, all right, that 20 plus type of run, 20 plus miles. Middle distance is 15 to 18 miles in my training regimen, all right? So I use the same shoe for both, middle distance and long runs. Looking at the Skechers Max Road 5 for the soft and high cushion, I don't think it is out here. Yes, I, yes it is. I gotta keep doubting my, I keep doubting myself, I, I, but here it is. Skechers Max Road 5, love this shoe. Oh man, lots of people buying this shoe right now and love it. I just love it, I love, the, I, and it's lightweight, okay? There you go, Skechers Max Road 5. Firmer landing, interesting. Oh, this was crazy. This shoe did not work for me, the Adidas Boston 10, because it's too firm. It just, it just, I prefer a little forgiveness underfoot, and they completely changed the Boston lineup from 2020, from the Boston 9 to the Boston, like, totally different shoe. So, but it is going to be a firmer landing, and you definitely could use it for long runs, okay? There you go, Adidas Boston 10 for a firm landing for a long run. Now this was interesting, I'm gonna put an asterisk or yeah, asterisk next to this. I'm not personally looking for ground contact for long runs, some people some people are, all right? So I'm gonna put out there the Solomon Phantasm. This is actually a shoe that fell through the cracks for me. I did test it, but um, I definitely don't think I'll take it to 50 miles. The Solomon Phantasm for ground contact for a long run shoe. Now, be careful, like that shoe, it's, it's made more so for racing actually, but if you do love ground contact and you're strong and you're durable, you know, you could consider it for a long run. Just, it's just not, it's just not quite gonna do it for me. Moving on to responsive, yes, the A6 Glide Ride 2. Don't forget about this shoe, 100% responsive through that midsole now. It could almost fall into the firm landing as well, but I stuck it into the responsive category for a long run shoe. It's almost built like a stability shoe, just so you know. Like it it will provide support for you. If you need a little more support through your foot strike, um, definitely consider the Asics Glide Ride 2. Okay, and crazy enough, last but not least, and listen, you could, yeah. All right, I'll leave that for another day, but oh, I'm gonna go Puma DV8 Nitro for the last long run shoe, actually the last shoe in the entire matrix for energy return. I took this shoe out for a 20 mile run at 620 a mile and it was effortless. Now, you all know I had a major issue with a blister on the back of my Achilles tendon, so they need to figure out the heel counter on the inside of the shoe in 2022. But overall, I'm ex I'm very excited about Puma and what they're doing in 2021. So yeah, I'm gonna give it to the Puma Deviate Nitro for energy return. Uh, bouncy, maybe a little too soft under step. I think they could work on the durometer again next year, just a little bit. But overall, it is a fun ride. Of course, I didn't talk about the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite. Um, yeah, I didn't talk about it. It didn't quite make the cut for the threshold and race day category 
But uh, overall, yeah, Puma DV8 Nitro coming in at $160. Now, if I could only buy one long run shoe thus far, crazy. So I prefer not to train as much in carbon fiber plates. I like to leave that for race day. And yes, the Max Road 5 does have a plate in there. It's called the, it's a H plate. It's a little different. Actually, I opened it up uh, about, I don't know, a week ago. And so there it is on your screen. And uh, so if I could only buy one long run shoe though, it would be the Max Road 5. Yeah, just getting the miles in, not going crazy fast. That's the other thing. Long run should not be too fast. You're just getting the miles in at a nice, solid, steady pace. And sometimes if you train in carbon fiber plates, for long runs, you might be picking up the pace too much, okay? Um, yeah, I'll leave it there. Oh my goodness, what a day. Running Shoe Matrix, I'll just put some, some titles on the screen, soak it in one more time for some of the categories. Easy, Daily Trainer, Tempo. Again, these shoes are listed down below. Also over on DemoreGlobalRunning.com. Guys, we did it. And again, thank you for your patience as you awaited this vlog. It just takes a lot of testing, a lot of research, and a lot of crossing off shoes that just didn't work, adding shoes that are like this one literally took to 50 miles today. There's my run today. All right. What is it? July 19th. I do believe it's today. So this guy just made it, made it into the matrix by the hair of uh, not my chinny chin chin, but somebody's chinny chin chin out there. Here we go. Question of the day is what has been your favorite road running shoe thus far of 2021 and why? And you can only pick one. All right, there you go. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for hitting that subscribe button. And again, thank you for sharing this vlog. Let's, let's let it rip. All right, let's let it fly a little bit all over the interwebs, wherever you want to share it. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok even. I'm on TikTok. Let's connect on TikTok as well. All right, there you go, everyone. All right, we will toss it to the late 2020 running shoe matrix. Late 2020 running shoe matrix. Right there, right there, right there from about, you know, six or seven months ago. Onward and upward, DGR strong. All right, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.